All right, here we go. This is Beyond Therapy, Beyond Science, a new model for healing the whole person. I am Wilson Chafe. Uh, we're going to start on page 286. The new paradigm. You cannot fight for the environment without eventually getting into conflict with politicians. Wangari Matai in Time Magazine. Writing about the new paradigm could be a life's work, and probably will be for me. I have planned to write a comprehensive book on living in process for many years, and will do so in the near future. However, I do want to present here some ideas about a new paradigm that are being expressed, and give some information about my own experience of a new paradigm. I see two main groups actively struggling with the extensive implications of a new paradigm. Those two groups are theoretical scientists, mostly physicists, and people in recovery. Willis Harmon has suggested to me that he believes the number of these scientists looking at a new paradigm to be very few. My experience has been that the scientists are changing theories and thinking and the recovering people are changing attitudes, feelings, and behavior in themselves. There are also scattered others who are writing and or talking about a new paradigm, such as some therapists, workshop leaders, spiritual leaders, and new age people. In my experience, the new paradigm cannot be approached theoretically. The very nature of the paradigm is that it is a participatory paradigm. One can have ideas and assumptions about the theory and the way it should operate. This is very different from living it, and living is the only way to really know it. I believe there is an inherent difficulty in trying to arrive at this new paradigm through our brains. We need to lead with our bodies and our beings and not with our brains. This issue is clearly demonstrated in recovery from addictions. No one ever recovered through understanding the 12-step program or through understanding addiction. In recovery groups, we often hear the difference between talking the talk and walking the walk. Talking the talk is trying to recover in our heads and through understanding. Not only does this not facilitate recovery, it impedes it. Walking the walk is living recovery until it is a process out of which comes our being. In my experience, many scientists, futurists, New Age people, and especially therapists are interested in talking the talk and not walking the walk. The message and the method are often not congruent. In the Living Process Network, we have to be able to bring the message and the practice together in order to know the new paradigm. One of the processes that I find is typical of the old paradigm or the addictive process is what I call the girdle syndrome. In the girdle syndrome, we predetermine what and how something or somebody should be, and we try to fit into it. Unfortunately, the predetermined mold is almost always several sizes smaller than reality and never really fits. Often the ideas about a new paradigm are not tempered by experience or even science. It is important not to make the same political and emotional mistakes of the old mechanistic paradigm and force ourselves to accept a new paradigm because of an emotional, political, or theoretical attachment when it does not seem congruent with our experience. This very process of embodied or non-experiential figuring things out is itself the old paradigm. Often, those operating in old paradigms have changed the content of what is said and have clung to processes and procedures that are incongruent with that belief system. Doing this is one of the subtle tactics we use to convince ourselves that changes are being made while in no way threatening the old paradigm and its political belief system. As is said in 12-step circles, 
half measures availed us nothing. Or, in the words of Jesus, forsake all you have and follow me. Paradigm changes are radical. Recovery is radical. I have often watched people in the helping professions who are forced into recovery because of their disease, then, sadly, be willing to compromise their recovery to maintain acceptance in their professional community, trying desperately to keep a foot in each camp. I have also seen some achieve a modicum of personal recovery, and then, when that recovery requires them to move beyond personal and family recovery, to organizational and professional recovery, choose to stay in the disease process at that level. When we live in process, we are open to wherever that process takes us. Often, that is different from where we thought we were going or what we planned. It is interesting that every major religious leader has spoken in these terms, but a mechanistic scientific worldview introduced the illusion of control and the subtlety of this illusion permeates even our thinking about the new paradigm. If the new paradigm comes out of recovery and experience, the illusion of control must be dealt with early on, and again and again. Having said all this about leading with theory, I do want to present some salient ideas from key writers in this area, and then go on to share some ideas that have emerged from my own recovery and work with living process. 